today I want to talk about faith is. Faith is. I don't know if you've been attending our church for 30 years, then I think you probably know what faith is. But there's a lot of things in our society concerning faith. There's been multitudes of teachings on it, mega books written. Uh, I'm sure that right now somewhere in the TV line, somebody's talking and teaching on faith. And I want, this morning, I want very much for you to hear my heart and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Because I want to tell you that um, faith is not about your healing. You do need faith to ask the Lord to heal. But faith is so much more than healing and finances. And I don't know if you're aware of all of the teachings in the earth, but faith is more than healing, and faith is more than finances. Faith is mentioned in the Old Testament just twice. Just twice. Once it says in Habakkuk, the just shall live by how? Faith. And then this is most sobering in Deuteronomy 32, 2, when God is dealing with the Israelites and their rebellion. And he wrote, he says this, he says, I will hide my face from them. I will see that their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation. <coughs> children in whom is no faith. That's the two mentions of faith in the Old Testament. But my message this morning is going to come from Hebrews 11, and it's going to talk about all these people of the Old Testament that honored God with faith when they didn't even know what faith was. They just knew to be obedient. And one thing that faith is, church, is obedience. If we have faith in God and if we trust God with our lives and if we love God and if we serve God and if we work for God and if we desire for God to be number one in our life, it requires a faith to be obedient, to do what God says when he says it, to go where he says to go, to give what he says to give, and to do whatever he asks us to do. That's faith because he most often asks us to do things we don't think that we're capable of doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. God asks us to go places and to do things and, to, and to, to, to be specific in certain areas, pick up the phone, call somebody. Faith is about being obedient in God and trusting Him and believing in His Word. So the knowledge of faith, and the, ex the, the explanation of faith comes from the New Testament, where we learn that uh, every time Jesus healed, for instance, he, he um, healed the lame man. And when he healed the lame man, he said, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more. The reason of the healings in the New Testament is to point men and women to the power <coughs> and the anointing and the supernaturalness of God and that Jesus is there and he, he does do miracles and he does heal but a part of that healing is salvation yes. and our faith is how we have salvation how many know that yes. we don't get salvation until we die until we stand before God and then our reservation of salvation is brought into reality and God says, your name is written in the book, enter thou in. Church, needs, uh, church at large needs to comprehend the power of faith and obedience to God. Uh, you know, um, they brought a lame man to Jesus who couldn't walk. He was on a bed and they took the roof off and they let the man down. And, and Jesus said to him, thy sins have for, for, been forgiven thee. It, it, every time as Jesus ministered healing or ministered something supernatural, he, he wanted to talk about their sin. He wanted to talk about salvation. He wanted to talk about being whole in their spirit as well 
as being whole in their body. And so much attention has been given to the body that we forget how much God wants to deal in our spirit. That's why he gave us the fruit of the spirit, that he can work in our life with the fruits of the spirit. So Jesus, you remember the blind man, the blind man cried out to Jesus and Jesus uh, spoke to him and he said, receive thy sight, thy faith has saved thee. So it's important, church, that we recognize that faith has to do most importantly with our salvation. Do we believe that he had, can take away our sins? Do we believe that we are a new creature in Christ? Do we believe that there is a mansion, a heavenly home being built for us that when Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you and I'll come again and receive you unto myself, do we believe that? Yes. That's what our faith is. Because that is the end of our faith, which is eternal life. So important, church. The manifestation of healing, uh, monies, finances, miracles, always had a uh, purpose. And it was to point to the supernatural power of the anointing of Jesus Christ. Yes. Faith is many things, church. And what we need to see is the full spectrum of faith. If you're a faith follower, and you might disagree with this message today, I would exhort you to go to the Bible, look up every scripture on faith, and you will see that there's multitudes of things that transpire because of faith beside healing and finances. <coughs> So we want to talk about faith is. I'm just going to give you this scripture reference for a few of these for uh, brevity's sake, and then we'll go to chapter 11. Romans 1.8 tells us, faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Do you believe that? Do you know that Hollywood gets up and they'll talk <coughs> about faith? They're not talking about Jesus, but they're talking about faith. Faith is known throughout all the world. And when they want to say something fuzzy and warm and encouraging, the world might say, well, have faith. That's not the faith of Christ. It's the world's faith because faith is, Romans 1.8, faith is spoken about all through the world. The point is we must have the realization who that faith is and it is in, it's in Jesus Christ. Romans 4.5 says, faith is counted for righteousness. There's righteousness in our life if we walk in faith. If we portray the fruit of God's spirit and we are obedient to the things of God, then faith is accounted for righteousness. Romans 14, 23. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. That's powerful. 2 Corinthians 10, 15, and 16 says, talks there about when your faith is increased, you will be enlarged abundantly. Now, if you read that passage of scripture, you're not enlarged abundantly in health or in finances. You can be uh, enlarged abundantly in health and finances. But this passage of scripture says that you are, will be enlarged abundantly to preach and teach the gospel. Faith is about Jesus Christ, church. Galatians 3.25, it says, After faith is come. Was there ever a time there wasn't faith? Old Testament, they were not taught faith. They had faith because it is an innate response in the children of God. I used to hear saints, the older saints, say, listen to these things and they say, well, I prayed, and it didn't get answered, and I must not have any faith. I've heard people say to me, I question my salvation because I just don't think I have faith because these things that I ask God for don't happen. This is not faith, church. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We never preach that. We may not see it now, but we will see it eternally. Yes. That's our goal, church. We're not here to just have a good day. 
we're here to press for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus and to see that we have an eternal destination. And our faith will teach us to wait for that till it becomes a reality in our life. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. We hope for eternal life. We hope for healing. We hope for finance. And we're obedient to God, and we're faithful to God, and God is faithful to us. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11 is the chapter of faith. Some people in our world have Ephesians worn out in their Bible. But my mother's Bible, <coughs> chapter 11 of Hebrews, is what is worn out. Because every time she was discouraged or despondent, she went there to see what faith was. And so as we go there, first of all, Jesus is the greatest example of faith. He is, he came to the, he went to the garden. How many know what I'm talking about? We're going to get to start into the Lenten season. And Jesus knelt in the garden. And if there was ever anybody that was full of faith, it was Jesus. He knew heaven. He knew God personally. He came to be our Savior and, and to save us from our sins. He knelt in the garden, and in that moment, he asked God if, if he could not go through this. And sometimes that's what we ask for, isn't it? We ask for God to heal us. We ask for God to do this for us. We ask for God to do these things. And God had an answer for Jesus. And the answer was, I have prepared this plan for you. The cross is waiting for you. Calvary is there. And the outcome of it, you don't see it now. But the outcome of it will be the magnitude of salvation that comes to the body of Christ. So Jesus said, well then, not my will, but thine be done. And often when we ask God for specifics, we need to follow it up and say, Lord, this is what I need and this is what I want, but your will be done in my life. Somebody said, pray for my kids that they will do this. And I say, pray for your kids that God will perform his will yes. and his work in their life. Yes. Because so often we pray for things that may not be what God wants for us. And so faith is being able to face your cross. Faith is being able to face your pain and your shame. Jesus faced those things. And he did it by faith, not knowing if he would ever come forth from the cross, from the grave, he did it in faith, believing, because he trusted the Father and he obeyed the Father. And therefore, he knew that he would come forth triumphant. And God is going to require that of his body in the days ahead. He's going to ask us to do things that we don't think we can do. He's going to ask us to go places. He's going to ask us to give. He's going to ask these <coughs> things of us. That we're going to have to have faith strong enough to believe, oh yes, God, you said that to me. Help me to perform it in my life. Help me to do it. Help me to overcome the fear. And help me to be triumphant. And help me to move in faith <coughs> and be obedient to your call. Faith is the fruit of God's Spirit in us. You see, how could we respond to salvation if we didn't have faith. And faith is the fruit of God that is in us. And when we <coughs> bow in humble adoration and ask forgiveness, we are being obedient and faith is coming alive in our spirit and in our heart. And if you want to build your faith, Jude says, building up your faith, how? Praying in the Holy Ghost. The enemy has detoured the body of Christ from the baptism of the Holy Ghost for one purpose, yes. that we will not be strong in our faith mm -hmm. because our faith is built up by praying in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's revelatory to me as I see the power that God has placed in faith and how the church has zeroed in on one or two angles and not recognize the power and the anointing of the faith that God has put within us. We must never say, I don't think I have faith. 
If God lives in you, faith lives in you. It's a point of embracing it. It's a point of saying, God, stir up my faith. Lord, increase my faith that I might be abundant in my obedience to you and in my trust and in my belief. Now we look at Hebrews 11. And it says, By faith Abel offered the right sacrifice. Nobody taught uh, Abel how to handle uh, how to handle faith. But there was a response of God in him. Same as there is a response of God in us. And it says, by faith, Abel offered the right sacrifice. It says, by faith, Enoch was translated because he walked with God. Wouldn't that be awesome to be able to walk with God in such a position that your faith would just translate you? It's not, it's not an unordinary thing, church. Verse 20 says, by faith, Isaac, he blessed Jacob and Esau. By faith, uh, Jacob, when he was uh, in trouble with his brother, by faith he, he, he came and he blessed. And by and 20 verse, 22nd verse says, by faith, Joseph. And 23rd, by faith, Moses. All these Old Testaments thrived on faith that nobody taught them about. I wish we could see the revelation of that. They didn't have to be taught about faith because faith lived in them through the power of God. Same faith lives in us through the power of God and the fruit of God's Spirit. If you want your faith to be strengthened, try walking in love and joy and peace and long-suffering and meekness and faith. Try walking in those fruits of the Spirit. Try uh, building up your faith in the Most Holy Ghost. You know, when is the last time that you just got on your face before God and spoke in tongues for 20 minutes? Building up your faith. This is why we don't have faith, because basically the church is not teaching the baptism of the Holy Ghost at large. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost because it builds our faith. Not seeing an answer builds our faith, church. What builds our faith is that there is an anointing of God within us and we believe in Christ and we believe in our salvation. This is speaking of Moses. It says by faith he, he went where he didn't know he was going. By faith he forsook Egypt. He took a multitude of people out of bondage by faith. Did he know where he was going? No. He, by sight, he knew nothing. The Bible says in verse 27, it says, He didn't go in fear, and he endured, seeing that which was invisible. 28, through faith, he kept the Passover. And by faith, they passed through the Red Sea. And yet, nobody taught them about faith. And, and, and church, this is so sobering. Because at the end of Hebrews 11, it says, They did all this not seeing the revelation of Jesus Christ. They prophesied about him. They talked about the spirit of Christ. They talked about these things. Now, where is the church today? We have to build ourselves up in our faith because it is a fruit of God that is in us. And we can't say, I don't have faith, because we do have faith. It's a, it's a question of embracing it, walking it, living it, enduring it, being steadfast, in the grace of God. Verse 30, by faith the walls of Jericho fell. They marched seven times not seeing anything, but by faith they fell. Now, in starting at the 32nd verse, I want to just read this if you have your Bibles there. <coughs> Hebrews 11, 32. It says, what shall I say more? 
For the time would fail me to tell you of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Dad, Samuel, who through faith, here's what they did. This is faith. You know, subduing kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness. We sang that. Faith in the Father, faith in the Son. Demons will flee. We need the faith to come against the harassment of the enemy in our day. And it says, 33, who through faith they subdued kingdoms, they wrought righteousness, they obtained promises, they shut the mouths of lions. We're talking about faith, church. Yes, Quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of sword. Out of weakness they were made strong. They waxed valiant in their warfare and, and, and with the uh, ar armies of the aliens. Verse 35, they were tortured. Some accepted deliverance that they would receive a better resurrection. And others had the trial of cruel mockings, scourgings, moreover bonds asunder. They were tempted, they were slain with the sword, they were destitute, afflicted, tormented. Have you walked in any of those paths? They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of earth. And now hear this verse 39. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, what? That's faith, isn't it? Yes. The substance of things hoped for. They hoped for an eternity that was not made with them. They hoped for it. They didn't see it. They suffered for it. And yet, they did not see it. Faith is God keeping us through our adverse conditions. I'll say that again. <clears throat> Faith, if we can endure and be obedient, it is God keeping us through the adverse conditions. Now we could have a testimony service here, and we could hear the testimonies of circumstances and adverse conditions that God kept us through. That we didn't know where we were going, we didn't know how we were going to do it. But somehow we made it through and we come on the other side. Well, Sunday school this morning, Acts 6, was about Stephen. Now, Stephen, it says he was a man of faith and he was full of the Holy Ghost. And he, he preached against what? Sin. It angered the people. And he could have used his faith and said, now I did what you asked me to do, God, so now keep me and keep me from this stoning. So what I want the church to see is that if we love God and if we're obedient to God and we have a hope of eternal life, we must walk it out. And Jesus said, well, you can say unto this mountain, be thou removed. He isn't talking about a dirt mountain church. He's talking about the mountain that Job faced when everything came against Job. Wasn't that a mountain? Yes. He lost everything. Finally, his children, he sat in sackcloth and ashes. That was his mountain. Yes. But he said, I didn't come into this world with anything. I'm not going out with anything. And what did he say? Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's faith. Yes. We need to be strengthened in our faith. We need to recognize if we have a circumstance or an adverse condition that we have hope in Christ. And if we never see the end, we will see it yes. eternal. That's right. Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost and he looked up steadfastly and his faith preserved him until he saw Christ standing with arms outstretched and the first martyr went into eternal life. And since then, there's been multitudes. And they're still dying in the nations for the cause of Christ. Yes, yes. In the Islamic faith, they're being set aside from their families. And they're being tortured. These things are going on in our world today. Paul and Silas, they sang at midnight. 
They could have said, Lord, we did what you wanted us to do. Now deliver us from this. They were beaten. They were chained. And their faith sustained them to the point that they could sing and worship <coughs> in the midst of their situation. Paul suffered much for the cause of the kingdom. 2 Corinthians 11, he was said that he was beaten with rods. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. He was in perils of waters and robbers and countrymen and his own people and in weariness and painfulness and hunger and thirst and cold and nakedness. How many know he's one of the greatest apostles of faith? Mm -hmm. yes. Faith is not getting what you want, church. Faith is enduring until you see the evidence now or eternity. So I want to say this to you today. Faith is, I fought a good fight. You know, I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. Even in adverse conditions, I continue to trust and believe and hope for. And Paul wrote this in Galatians 2. He said, I am crucified with the Church of Jesus Christ really doesn't understand that because we haven't had to be crucified. But Paul understood it. He said, I'm crucified with Christ, yet I live. He said, I, I don't live, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. And the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, says, Let us draw near to the heart full of assurance of faith. In that 22nd verse, it speaks to me this morning because we need a true heart full of the insurance of faith. You know, the enemy works on us. He's out to rob, to kill, to steal, to maim, to harass. And unless we have this faith, in God that one day we will see eternal life. One day we will overcome. One day the things that God has promised will come to pass. The Old Testament saints were full of faith because it was just in them. It's in us, church. We have so much more than they do because we have Christ. And we have seen and we understand and we are taught what faith is. And we understand that if we have faith, we must be obedient. And if we are obedient, then we know that we please God. Because if we don't have faith, church, it's sin. When there's doubt and fear and unbelief, those things do not please God. But you know, God, our faith sustains us because we know He will forgive us. And he says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. It's a profession. It's something that when Jesus Christ comes into our heart and our life, that's it. From then on, it's our profession to walk in faith. How many of you have experienced wavering? <clears throat> says, no, don't let our faith waver, the scripture says. And then we come to Ephesians, take the shield of faith. You know, it will quench the fiery darts of the enemy. When the enemy harasses you, that's his darts, and you raise the shield of faith. And you say, no matter what you do to me, no matter what you say to me, no matter what, I still have faith to believe that God is more powerful than you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. We hope for eternal life. We hope for the blessings of God. We hope for healing. We hope for righteousness. I want to conclude this morning with 1 Peter 1.6. And this is Peter who had to be prayed for. 
because he was following Jesus, but evidently he wasn't walking in his conversion. I think that there are those in Christianity today that have said the sinner's prayer don't walk in their conversion. Peter says, greatly rejoice through now for a season, if it need be, if you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. Has anybody been in manifold temptations? And he says that the trial of your faith, when you have those manifold temptations or those circumstances that cause you to just want to faint, that is when you have to recognize this is the trial of your faith. And will your faith conquer? Will you be obedient? Will you endure? Will you face the cross? Will you face the mountain of Calvary? Is your faith strong enough? The disciples, when Jesus taught this, they said, Oh God, oh, oh, oh Lord, increase our faith. That should be a daily prayer. Father, increase my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. This is the trial of your faith, and your trial of your faith is more precious than gold. Gold perishes, but the trial of your faith is laid up to <coughs> eternal life, and it's more precious than gold. And it will be tried by fire, and uh, the scripture says, but it will be found under praise and honor at the hearing. I pray that the Church of Jesus Christ will not slumber, but that they will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today, because God is going to require supernatural things of his people, yes. and it's going to take faith. We have to awaken our faith. Faith is sleeping in Christianity at large. Because whole congregations are depending upon preachers and evangelists and teachers and healers instead of God. Now Jude, Jesus' half-brother, didn't believe in Jesus, but finally came to salvation. And when he did, he wrote these words in Jude 1st, chapter only, chapter 3. He said, uh, Beloved, uh, I'm writing to you with diligence about salvation. It is needful for me to write and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. Now, church, you know what helps you to contend for the faith? What helps you contend for the faith is a trial. <laughs> That's what helps you contend to the faith. Is when things, you know, when you get in your car and it don't start, won't go. That's a trial, you know. But you, you, can't, you can't just cuss it and kick it and go away because that's not godly nor faith. Maybe God has a purpose. You know what I'm saying, church? We need more faith. We need faith to see us through the, the trials that is going to come upon Christianity and is going to come upon the church. As we awaken in the supernatural and we awaken in faith and we awaken in strength, just when you think you're the strongest, you'll face a, a strong trial to prove that your faith endures. He says, I'm writing to you, saints, for one reason, and I write with diligence, and that's you should earnestly contend for the faith. He didn't say just contend for the faith. He said earnestly. You know, you look up the word earnest and it means press, strive, push, exert, exert energy. And that's what it's going to take in this last hour as Jesus prepares to come. And of course, we can conclude this message today with Jude, the 20th verse, which says, Ye beloved, 
build up yourselves in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, and what? Keep yourselves in the love of God. Now, this faith and this love of God is all in you. Will you walk in it? Will you embrace it? And will you pursue the fruit of the Spirit that God has placed within you? You know, we have a free will. And we can choose to whine or swear or have an ungodly conversation. We can choose that. Or we can choose in the midst of our long suffering to love and to be faithful and to have the, the fruit of the Spirit activated in our life. Now, I pray that you will sincerely consider your discipline and prepare yourselves for the 40 days ahead. And let's grow together in the Spirit of God and the fruit of the Spirit. Let us pray. Father, we hear your word to us today. We thank you, God, that you give us the sound teachings in your word that we can understand what faith is. Encourage your people today and strengthen our faith, I pray. In Jesus' name we ask. Father, we thank you for the offerings and the monies that you give us. Father, we ask that as they give their tithe today, that you'll bless them in a supernatural.